frozen. Uh -oh. Put wrong with the uh... right. Uh, it's great being on stream and having technical difficulties, isn't it? Hey, happy day. So everybody can see. Bad things are happening in the stream. <laughs> it is a sign. Oh, 
Good things never happen. Glorious choice. Some real ass technical difficulties. I don't know what the problem could be. I don't hear you, Jeeves, unfortunately. We're having technical difficulties. So, what I might have to do is reboot to you over Discord. Yes! We hear you. Yes! Okay. A simple refresh was all it took. Ah, oh, the classic turn it off, turn it on again. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna mute the sound on Discord. I want to see if the sound on the stream is fine. Oh. Tell me how I sound, because I'm always quiet. Yeah, I've tried adjusting it. It just doesn't go any higher. You hear, you sound fine to us, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's on my end that I... Which, which is weird, right? Because it's only Twitch. YouTube is fine. Hmm. <laughs> no idea. I mean, Twitch hates me, obviously. <laughs> Naturally. Made one too those. many Jang Su stone bed jokes, and they were <laughs> like, all right, what's his IP? We're going to limit the volume on that IP specifically. I don't know. I haven't pulled up the alchemical universal in ages. You ready to make one of those for medals in this campaign? I mean, I have one, technically. Yeah, but you know it's not as fleshed out as that is. No, I do have the Umi somewhere. It's somewhere. There it is. Universal Metal Index. Yeah. Oh, we can see lots of classes in the bottom. Lots mm -hmm. of tabs. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just go boom. And there's the soft class of metals. And then you go to light class. And then you go to tactile. And then you go to heavy and adamant. And I'm probably going to add simple class in here however during mining don't just find ores sometimes find gems yeah but that doesn't fall under this <laughs> True. At, uh, i don't really have a universal gem index start building that ugi baby <laughs> or the gooey movies. Just give it a, just call it GUI, the Gem Universal Index. GUI. I like it. <laughs> now, I do not know if anyone else is joining for this phylactery today. And after a lot of technical difficulties, I have no idea. 
I simply do not know. I don't, I don't know, know either. Why. I messaged Rook, and I haven't gotten anything back from him. And then Yoshi, we already know Yoshi. Yoshi can't make it. It's working. Yeah. And I don't even know if Owl knows about it. I didn't mention it to him. I haven't set up a card for him on the screen yet, but I can do it. Yep. Give him a chance to decide whether or not he wishes to stay first. <laughs> yeah, we have to settle in before we like throw him into. Hey, exactly. let's talk about a campaign you weren't here for. Pretty, well, it's just about pretty much. Let's talk about the rule set. Actually, when we do talk about rule sets, I think it's valuable for him to be there. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that'll teach him so many things of the rules that we use and why we use them. Yeah, well, because you guys went, make it hard, or... <laughs> the last time we went, make it hard, and you decided, well, you know, every monster has an X of 10 PC. <laughs> that doesn't work, bro. No, it You took doesn't. it literally and made them literally harder. Yeah. Thus increasing their AC. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <gasps> was that a wild kill? Yeah, it was. No idea why. Spine on it, obviously. I wonder how they all live in captivity. Making sure <laughs> snakes Sorry, didn't man. eat you. My bad. Yeah, well, no one else shows up in the next four minutes. We just going ahead as is. Uh. All right. Don't know if uh, we could mention anything about not being able to join. Uh, I don't know, it's been two weeks. It has been two weeks. Definitely. It's been a good two weeks. Oh. It's been moderately okay. <laughs> they could have been better, you know. Uh, you know, like certain things just stopped existing and then we can go back to normal. That'd be great. We're looking at you, dictators. I mean, honestly, like... Fuck 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least we can say uh, next year. Looking back on 2020, we can safely say with hindsight that we don't want to repeat that last Yeah, year. don't say that. We haven't made it to 2021 yet. We don't know if there's going to be a 2021. Right. December 31st, the final boss emerges. You know that uh, Max Mac, uh, Mad Max movie, right? Oh, God. Yeah, that's set in 2021. Okay. I mean, makes sense given the uh, the current projection of our planet. So. And then 2030 is when Waterworld takes over. Yeah. With slightly worse acting and less story. Yeah, I Jurassic see, Park I will probably remember. be in 2050. Bring me dinosaurs! Yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah, she's tapping. And y'all, for the life of me. I don't remember what the intro to these uh, podcasts are, because I'm tired. <laughs> Dude, I feel you. I'm fucking tired, man. Yeah, this, I guess we better start. So, well, hey. welcome to the Fun Lantern Podcast, the podcast in which we discuss all things tabletop and all things Dungeons & Dragons, including our own. Today with me, I have the illustrious Dr. Jeeves and the wonderful B.D. Blackfire. Today we're talking about yep. arcane 
curiosities, pretty much, which are magic items, essentially. And things that make magic items. Maybe magic in general. Just blanket that term. Just make life easier. So, yeah. Uh, quite a broad topic for us. Um, I mean, first campaign had pretty eh items. They weren't the best. They're very uh, niche. Was the word I would use. Uh, there were some really fascinating ones, though. Yeah, uh, there, there was a few. I, if I had the documents on this computer, I would use them. But I don't. All I know is there are some on my old world anvil, which is here, like the Pang of Bahama, which was a, a sword that was wielded by uh, Akara for a while. Um, and then we traded it for claw weapon that yes. got turned into a plague, I remember. Yeah. Uh, Tagashima, the Mantle of Aaron Nastra, Last Stand, the Transdimensional Die, and the Great Hunter's Arrow as well. I can't offer it left me to remember the Transdimensional Die. Neither do I. It sounds fun, though. I'd roll it. Oh, it's a great way to start. Transdimensional die are a set of three six-sided dice carved from mysterious metal and etched with runes that even the most skilled cryptographer could not decipher. Each die has a similar matching rune to another, suggesting a connection, but the rest are completely unique to each die. So, yeah. It's, uh... Pretty much just a set of dice that can teleport you or just <laughs> get you out of sticky situations um i like that yeah it's very randomized though so that's that's what makes it great uh wait you can just use it to cast dimension door and far step though yeah but it's randomized pretty much it, it doesn't, well, you can cast it, but it randomizes which direction you go. Um, Is this that link, dimension door, far step? Mm -hmm. You need mobility, cast the dice. <laughs> yeah. Crap. Make sure the special D6s. Mm. The ones you don't use while cheating on, oh, sorry, did I say that? Uh, it, <laughs> I had uh, nothing. Oh man, I did My set of weighted trans dimensional die. <laughs> <laughs> I will always far step where I want to go. <laughs> uh, this thing at First, they open a work. dimension door into your um, pockets bag of holding. Great hunter arrow. Here, I really like the sentient weapon that Vincent had. Oh, Tanigashima? Yeah. The the gun? Yeah. Uh, it's great. Never really talked much about what it really was, but it was just for um. I mean, it was essentially a trap stole, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, Vordak Silverton, the uh, the Ever Shield. That's yeah. what it was. Didn't he come out of the gun at some point? When the he the went... final bullet was the final charge was expended, and yeah, he came out. Uh, uh, it was it was okay. It was a pretty okay gun. I think I was like, I think I made it solely because the character wanted to delve into firearms, and I went, yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> I'll make one. I'll make one gun. I like the idea of some magic items having sentience. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not that many that I have on here really mention sentience. Um, They're a rarity, man. Yeah, there were. I'm sure. I think you. I think you tried to give me one in the first campaign, and it was like, nope. You know what? I think I remember that. I think it was a sword inside one of the shops, and you like touched it, and it fucking damn near like took your mind, and you're like, now I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Yoshi's character in the first campaign had a um, sliver, what which was a sentient item. It was the this long glowing blade. Made of uh, basically ghostly light. Pretty good. Technically, Yoshi has had a character that got turned into a sentient ring. Technically true. That is Definitely. true with Second Chance, yeah. He's died, got left behind, and he's now at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it's like, oh well, he's dead. Okay, let's go. <laughs> no, we ended up releasing him at some point. Didn't somebody buy the ring? In yeah, some poor too. fisher picked it up and uh, started selling yeah. it around. Yeah, you know who it was. It was um. He left the Discord, so I can't recall his character's name. What, uh, Lazarus? Yeah. Yeah, Lazarus is the one that bought Yoshi and freed his soul from the ring. I remember. Mm, that, that was so long ago. That was like the session after the session where we made the joke about him jumping off the boat to dive into the ocean from like a mile up wearing a ring of water walking. <laughs> I was like, hey, is your ring active? Because you just died if it is. <laughs> oh, I love, I love your shoulders being covered with toes all of a sudden. <laughs> Your knees will become your shoulders, boy. <laughs> Ooh, that would hurt. For a second. For a second, then you'd shit aggressively. Well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it would only hurt for a second. <laughs> Probably it hurt for a short time, period of time. So there was a, like making magical items for you guys, it was pretty much just um Based on your class, really, what worked well. Uh, good, uh, I think, the first set of items you guys found was the uh, the Rat King items, or started to find them. Uh, Rari had yeah. the, the Ring of the Rat King, or it was something like uh, the Gloves of the Rat King, I think it was. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, across. Rat King sets uh, were the first items we found. Yeah. Or were... at least partially found. Yeah, the first couple items that we found of a curiosity set. Man, and I would show what they were if I had the file. <laughs> ah, damn. And I don't have a Rari anymore, so I don't know. Yeah. The, but the lore behind them was just, you know, made by a, a thief called the Rat King. No one quite knows why. But uh, when they uh, found the Rat King, they just killed him and took all his stuff. Well, no, 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 hold on. Well, Moo here is leaving out a lot with that, okay? First I don't, off, I don't it sounds it. like we robbed the... <laughs> sounds like we robbed... What? I mean, that's from a prior campaign. Yeah, the Rat King, by the time you found their stuff, they'd been dead for about 50 years, so. Say, that's not stealing them. Yeah, it's uh, repropriating. <laughs> Besides, he almost killed us. I had to summon the bear to deal with him. <laughs> oh, Yomer? Yeah, you summoned... That's another item that was uh, basically made off the bat, really. It was like, okay, fuck it. I love that item. I okay. was always so afraid to use it because it felt cheesy. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah dude. let's get this bear if that I, has I a plus 20 bear. that hit. <laughs> it, it fit well with your character, though. Uh, at least your yeah. classes. Yeah. Fucking bear god. 
Yes, bring in the the bear. Give him the bear. That was pretty much the all right. Let's end this fight. <laughs> Move. Summon the bear. Wait a couple turns. We're good. We're losing this fight. Summon the bear. We're bored by this fight. Summon of the bear. <laughs> Compared to comparing campaign 2 to campaign 1 though i noticed that campaign 2's items were a lot more focused around the type of goals that we were trying to go with our characters mm -hmm. yeah like david's buffed a lot of the things that he was focusing on for pretty much the entire campaign mm -hmm. and i know rooks did the same for his mm -hmm. yeah it was kind of the intention i think yours mm -hmm. did my my items uh, pretty much did what I wanted. Uh, made it easier to land spells. It made it uh, harder to resist spells, and gave me some resilience in the process. <laughs> also, number of spells. Sorcerers don't have much spells. Many spells. Yeah, it gave you quite a few fire-based spells, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, That's the... the only mismatch I think there was. With the yeah. storm sorcerer and then fire spells. Yeah, it. I think it gave you a, an option, pretty much, instead of being like, okay, this thing might be immune to lightning. So I thought, what hmm. else is scary as lightning? I thought fire. <laughs> You're a true fire bender now. You've got the lightning bending and fire bending. <laughs> well, hey, you can start fire with lightning. Can you start lightning with fire? Technically, yes. With enough science, anything is possible. I need to and size the shit out of this. Yeah, um... What's lightning other than a bunch of idiots rubbing air really quickly <laughs> past each other, charging it, and then discharging it? Yeah, the campaign 2 definitely had a lot more, uh, you, like, Goal focused items. I never discuss the ones I made for Yoshi with Yoshi. <laughs> I just <laughs> made them. I was like, I might have done a bad thing here and created a villain for future campaigns. <laughs> but. Well, since we're talking about homebrew and homemade items mm -hmm. from the creator himself, like. Uh... After you'd already tested them and then put them in the game for us to use, mm -hmm. what did you end up liking about them? What did you end up not liking about them? As the person that helped create some of them and created the other. Uh, out of all the items I tested, I think only one has caused me so much ire, and that was Agony, the fucking crossbow that Daron had. That thing caused me <laughs> so much pain, quite funnily. Uh, that thing caused all of this pain. Just like, oh yeah, you're just gonna sink eight shots and then just reload. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm f fuck it. I did this. It's on me. The best thing I tested for you guys was definitely uh, the. Uh, it seems so dumb, but it was the Stone of Minds that I enjoyed the most playtesting. Like it's balanced. It's utility. And it's superior to a sending stone, so it was perfect combination. It was either that or one of the uh, the the shovel weapons, grave digger and grave robber. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I don't remember those two. You never picked them up. Uh, it was a session during, it was like the session after Halloween, I think, and I put them in as an option, but you never picked them up. Um, right. What's another one that sort of springs to mind? Well, Playtesting is quite easy enough. It's pretty much I'll just sit about, roll dice against the CR of monster that I think you should be assigned that item. So, for example, like, um, what's a good one to use? Um, 
Let's see, it's a good aim to use an example. Uh, hmm, that's not a good example, Aiden. Uh, can't think of one, but basically I'll assign a number to an item and just say, okay, I'm expecting this person to get it by this point. So what would it act like if they were fighting one-on-one -on -one with a creature and then just constantly going back and forth and trying to see what its strengths are, what's too strong at, what's too weak at, what's okay at, and then trying to balance it out uh, individually. So you do uh, notice certain things. Some items look a lot more powerful than the others, probably because they're designed for later levels other than earlier levels. Because um, I look at classes as well. So bard, if I'm making for a bard, I will make it accessible at later levels so they get a better sort of end game as it is. Because bard at level twenty sucks in comparison to everyone else. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, wait, hold on. Ranger is still in five e. All right. Hey. Yet even the archetype ranger that everyone uses because 5e ranger sucks ass. Yeah. Is still yeah, like one. not super great compared to like it isn't amazing. everything else. Yeah. yeah uh, ranger, I made the Fey Warden set, which. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm going to just never use a spell slot, so I'm just going to take it up and, and naturally attune to it using spells. Which was dope. I actually really liked that. Especially since it was like a power gen campaign and we mm -hmm. just didn't have the attunement slots for a character realistically at like a level 30 position. Yeah, it's uh, definitely something that you have to think about long term. Like I said, every, it was every five levels beyond 20 gained a slot. So yeah, it's uh, six. Yeah, six. Five. Uh, apart from Daron, who had infinite <laughs> level thirty. I, I also have more because of because um... mm -hmm. you stole our druids. Yeah, yeah that's what you uh, stole, uh, a wish spell. Used a wish spell, yeah. yeah that was uh... yeah. You used um, the tree of Vigil's uh, blessing to do that, yeah. And it, uh, backfired on poor Cinder. Henry to prevent Henra mm. to actually figure out that uh, the spell slots were over the attunement slots were taken from someone else. Yeah, that's a that was more Speaking of a consequence. Of those, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jeeves, what were like over the campaigns that we've played what are some of the good things that you've noticed from the items some of the bad things and like what are a couple of your favorite items and least favorite items Ooh. i think i would still go with tanagashi yeah that the unspeakable gun it's one of the better designed weapons um I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've played enough D and D to have uh, gone through all the items to have an idea of what's balanced. Well, it doesn't well, have to be balanced. I mean, like just what true. did you enjoy using? What did you attune to that you just like ended up never using, or things like that? I uh, I took the stuff of the mage. I believe the. Mm -hmm. Final tier cost us not. Hmm. And I had plans of using it a lot more, but then I ended up never actually needing it. Hmm. It's it's got good utility spells in there, as well as a couple of damaging ones, but hmm. we never were in a situation where I was called on to actually use them. Hmm. And hmm. as soon as I got it, the most powerful feature of that stuff being able to absorb uh, spells launched at you just never got into play. Yeah. It, it's never, except for charging up the staff with some base levels, right? Mm -hmm. We never had any spells launched at me. 
I mean, that I could actually yeah, counter counterspell them all. Uh, <laughs> no, not even that. They were all abilities. Yeah. You can't absorb abilities. Yeah. Honestly, all of the magic kinda... damage that was launched my way was ability damage. Mm. Honestly, it's kind of just a way of stab the Magi. Zook mm -hmm. had one in campaign one, two, and it's just... Like, in a campaign, we don't... Like, a caster enemy in D&D &D is a lot rarer, I think. Yeah. To the other types. It's, like, it's you're, rarer you're bound than to come across others a because... melee or an archer or something. It's, it's mainly because it's so much... Uh, from a RP perspective, it's so much harder for a person to level up as a caster and the same goes for NPCs it's hard it takes a lot more effort right than mm -hmm. to learn how to use a bow or use a sword mm -hmm. so most of the enemies if they are caster then they're naturally humanoid or used to be humanoid or demonic right mm -hmm. and if they're demonic then it's not a caster it's an ability user mm -hmm. Casters actually use spell slots and abilities don't use spell slots. So, um, and then most humanoids, if if you're a caster, then you're squish, right? So, magic doesn't really happen. And if it happens, it's usually the BBEG. Good luck with that. Yeah. Where some of the stuff that you liked and some of your favorite magic weapons or magic items. I'm not sure. I think sentient weapons can be a real good thing, or sentient items at all. Mm -hmm. It can be a real interesting way of adding a lot of RP to a character. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that a GM needs to discuss with a player. Mm -hmm. Is the player comfortable with it, or is it fitting with the character at all? If it's in a character that's uh, going to just drop that item as soon as possible, then that's a wasted, uh, wasted item there. Well, that could be really amazing. Well, I think that kind of depends, too. Like, uh, Vincent didn't come into the game with the Tamagashi. He found it. Tamagashi? Sure. <laughs> Dude, whatever it's called. Honestly, like, it's it's been so long I don't remember. Can we just call it Tane? Sure. The Holy Pistol, dude. The Great Dragon Slayer pistol. Vampire Slayer, actually. And I killed Gorvax as well, so. Yeah, it's, it, you know, the, it's the pistol from Supernatural. It just kills everyone. The cult. Yeah, it's the cult. <laughs> Dude, that's what we'll call it from now on. The that's cult. so much easier. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, but I mean, he found the cult, and some items like that that are gonna be sentient are, it's kind of just that's the item. You don't have to use it. Sort true. Of thing. True, true. Oh, but yeah. it, it can add a lot, which is why it's really nice and really good. <laughs> uh, but just picking out an item, I, I'd say I've got clear favorites or dislike items at all. What, have, uh, what about you, Kenny? What's your top tier and lowest tier that you've encountered? Well, I know for sure that out of all the campaigns, my top three magic items would absolutely, in no like particular order, because mm -hmm. I like them all. Uh, the Arcanum. Okay. Which we had to nerf real hard when I found out the rules on that. I mm -hmm. remember that. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, Moo, this is way too strong. Uh, and then... The Stone of Mines, because mm -hmm. I love the fucking RP potential, just being like, fuck travel time, I'm gonna talk to this person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and I really liked the bear coin, because I had a lot of fun with the fact that David essentially had the power to summon a god to help him out, but he was still, like, very respectful and didn't bring him out realizing like i like the the thought that has to go into am i really gonna 
summon the bear god for this fight? Like, is it worth it to summon a god? Or, like, maybe piss off a god because I was like, hey, come deal with this, and it's not really a situation where I needed to, you know? Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed those three items. Out of, uh... What I liked most about items... I really like, like, the idea of we came across items, like, in Campaign 2 that really... Rather than, like, enhance the class, so to speak, it <laughs> more tailored to play styles of those characters. Because even if I were to play a ranger again, make a new character, it, it, he would not play the same as Fabian. Probably not, no. So I really like that idea. The, I think the l things that I didn't like about the homebrew items we've come across that I've just noticed here and there and hasn't been like really a big issue I'm just thinking super long term about it mm -hmm. is like in campaign 2 because we went to level 30 obviously the magic items had to boost up pretty quick too yeah. they were pretty big yeah. but because I didn't like the fact that we ended up gaining so much of a bonus from the sets for like our skill checks and stuff mm -hmm. because then the DCs had to go up so high that in the future if we were to do another campaign and say in a completely different group mm -hmm. decided that those characters wanted to go like visit Greyforge for something there's no realistic way that they would like live to get to the second floor <laughs> because the DCs are so high that it's not possible for them in, in as campaign, like a normal party to do it I, mean, I agree with you there but uh, I do think that in campaign 2 we were more chasing the ability to actually succeed on a save mm -hmm. than the DC uh, chasing us it felt more that we were always on the back foot when it came to power. I mean, maybe, but I was just talking more from the perspective of magic items. Like, because some <laughs> of the magic items, I didn't enhance my magic items at all, like when we could at the end. Mm -hmm. And even though I was going heavy for AC because everything was hitting us hard, and I was like, well, I've been doing this the whole campaign, I'm not going to switch now, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> Makes sense. But even though I was going for that, when the full set, like when I put it on and I saw that it essentially gave me like a 9 or 10 AC boost, and then I had like, fuck dude, I don't even know what David had, like plus 200 to his movement speed. Like the numbers were so big and it felt good because it, you know, it was a power game and we were going to level 30. Mm -hmm. But yeah. on those items, I would be fucking terrified, like, <laughs> of anyone, like, a normal, of one of those items falling into, like, a normal party hands, you know? Because <laughs> it's, like, instantly broken. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah, absolutely. boom, power of the whole campaign just fucking flew out because one item got found. Dad, can I help you? Can I uh, wear your armor? Sure, kid. See you in five seconds as you bolt from one side of the planet to the other. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking nuts, man. <laughs> but I, I think it's cool. I do. I do think we should probably not have, like, things go that high, though. Just oh, no, absolutely not. Them in the future characters. That, that would not work. Especially not in current campaign. Yeah. The oh, and on this campaign, I'd be surprised if we see any plus three shit by the time we hit the end. Um, chances are, as far as I am determining magic items in this campaign, they're very scarce. Or scarce. Uh, and any ones that you do find, they're more than likely to be utility. Bags of holding... Um, I don't know. Which honestly should just be like necessary equipment. Given yeah, pretty much. As soon as, as soon as like you hit level five, I'm like, okay, bag of holding instantly. 
That should just be in the rule book. It's like party hits like level five or six. Yeah, just give them it. Just give them one bag of holding for the party. Mm -hmm. They want more, they'll have to search for them. But... The uh, in every campaign that I've run, there's always been the you know the unique ones that are homebrewed. And I think what was it? Vestiges in the first campaign, curiosities in the second. This one are uh, they're objects of power or items of power. And they're weird. They're gonna be weird yeah, ones. Weird. Like you have to fight the item to attune to it. Yes. Well right. wait. Not like combat, but more like outroll it <laughs> at a game. Pretty much. See? Like, yeah, I was, I was just thinking, because you said you gotta, like, fight the item to attune to it, and the first item that popped in my head was, like, Zook's heart. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know if I... Maybe I'll go item a power list this run. Most of them that you'll find, they'll just be, like, very mundane-looking things, but with, like, a, a catch. Hmm. I like it. No, we, not to spoil anything, but there's a there's a a siege ram. It's made of rubber, Ooh. and all it's used for <laughs> is a punching bag. But if you hit a castle door with it, it solidifies and bursts through it in one hit. <laughs> but it's very unwieldy. It doesn't like to be moved. You'll be sitting there just boing it about. Punching back with the um, knock spell applied to it. It pretty much is. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, uh, and you. I find a lot of great things just on online. Just like that'd be a great idea for a night, and let's adjust it for uh, setting purposes. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there is. Uh, there's fist weapons. Yeah, the thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Great item. Great item. Yeah. I want to see if I can make them instead of just find them. I'm just going to smith up something it can smite. <laughs> exactly. Dude, I would, I would love to fucking... Hell yeah. I'm down to help you. <laughs> As a paladin, make fucking smite knuckler knuckle dusters for my fucking little brother. Exactly, that's the intent behind it. That... <laughs> Yeah, I can make the shells, right? But they need to be infused with magic. I'm gonna need some help there. Yeah. Speaking of items too, Moo, as a GM, mm -hmm. and having created items and put them in the game for us as players, yeah. we are very... Uh, I mean, the best words for it is, like, chaotic. We're a very <laughs> chaotic party. Yeah. For the most part. What are some of the, I mean, what are some of the best uses and worst uses you think that you've seen of the magic items? Because we've gone through quite a bit over the course of the past couple campaigns. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So I already know the answer to the best use. And that is Dotrin's cookie jar feeding his bag of mimics. Yes. <laughs> best yes. use just takes a downside and uses such a big positive that just negates everything. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it got hungry, so I'm just feeding it infinite cookies out of this cookie jar. <laughs> that was glorious. That was perfect. Um, I don't know any other... It's another... Good, I can't quite... It's been so long since campaign two, in my head, anyway. <laughs> um... That's another great thing you guys did. Hmm. Um. Damn, I, I can remember something and it's just on the tip of my tongue. It was, um. What the hell was it? Uh, uh, oh, the Arcanum 
in campaign one set up as a trap for guard men. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was a good one. That was so unfortunate. They barely made it like five feet and they were dying. I put a lot of effort into that. I spent like a week throwing that fucking map together. It's that was pretty good. I I, I enjoyed it. I felt so bad, but <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. They all died, and um, I don't know what the worst use would be. Well, maybe um, not worst use, but like unexpected use, I guess. Hmm. Because we've definitely taken some of your items and just done like weird shit. Yeah, uh, the most unexpected use of an item would be, uh, what was it? Yeah. Dude. Vault Breaker Phone. Oh, when you yeah. fought the Evergreens and Arara used it to get the fuck out. <laughs> Instead yep. of breaking through a vault, he went shh, shh, boom, away. <laughs> that was unexpected. I was like, yeah, it'll break through the wall. <laughs> Wait, thinking back on it, I don't think we ever used the vault breaker foam on the vault at all. No. We no, killed the obelisk with it, and then we broke through a wall. Mm -hmm. well, then again, Arari uh, wasn't really fighting person. If it wasn't in his favor, if there was a risk of getting hurt, mm. he'd be the fuck out of there. Yeah. He's the first one to run. Mm -hmm. Expedited delivery. Mm. I mean, that's how sneaky types stay alive, right? Yeah. True. And I also wanted a character that wasn't a hero, right? And it's mm. absolutely not a hero complex. Oh yeah, it was great. So well, whenever... Yeah. Things get tough, no, I'll just stick my ass out. No. Yeah. Maybe return if the tides turn, but... Hey, I caused this problem, but you fuckers, you're the ones who are going to clean it up for me. <laughs> Run away! Run away! That's the thing, I didn't really cause much no. problems. No, you always managed to rustle your way out. It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely some... Well, I know what the funniest thing that happened with a magic item was and that was the stone of mines being used to contact Melia when you'd been away for three years in the plane of fire <laughs> and you hadn't contacted her in that whole time David and was you were cursed time <laughs> you got cursed when you got back <laughs> that, that was funny to me anyway it was, I was like, funny to me no, it was just like, yeah I'd be mad too Thinking that, yeah, this person's dead. They haven't talked to me in three years. I actually also think it made a lot of sense that David didn't contact her. Because he actually had, like, no idea about time dilation as somebody that's never even thought about traversing the planes before. And now who can traverse to the yeah. Feywilds whenever he feels like it. Yeah, now he just <laughs> strolls across the gate and he's like... Yeah, man, I guess it's been a while since I visited Belial. I'm sure there's a gate in the plane of fire somewhere. Yoink. <sighs> oh, I have to visit your mother. Boop. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty, pretty funny. I don't know. I don't know what the most unfunny thing would be. Only thing I hear it's unfunny is just daylight in the underdark. But that wasn't a magic item. <laughs> that was yeah, a stupid that was just thing. Magic. That was just stupidity. <laughs> I do know, thinking back on it, I do know that if I had to pick out one magic item mm -hmm. that's caused us the most trouble across all the campaigns, yeah. I know which item that is. And that's the deck of many things. Yes. It shows up once per campaign. Always does. And no matter how much everyone in the party will yell at somebody to not touch <laughs> someone will touch it like five cards yeah true in the first campaign it was 
the fortune teller that used actual deck cards. Um, I can't remember where you found them in the second campaign, but they did occur. They appeared, it was some guy in a bar, much like the first campaign. And every, it was the one time we were all universally mm -hmm. like, no. Yes, I actually do know what it was. You went to um, a tavern in... Uh, you went to the Three Thieves Inn, and then... Um, uh, damn. It must have been a Christmas episode. Campaign 1 was a Christmas episode. That's why it brought it out. Yeah, I can't damn remember. I don't remember when it, it happened. It was very early. It was when you first met Aaron uh, and the, the Hands. And the person dealing the cards was Sudrael, who's the warlock of that team. Oh, yeah. Because they were a card what caster. Mistake we ever made. <laughs> we should have kept drawing until death came for us. <laughs> it's like, okay, campaign thing, let's go. Dude, we should have took our chances and just, like, in between threats, tried shanking them all. <laughs> <laughs> just like... How far can we get before they kill us? <laughs> yeah, I, I like maybe we can at was... least take one of these motherfuckers. Yeah, I definitely have learned that uh, with uh, NPCs that are intentionally evil threatening you, less is more. A lot less is so much more. <laughs> True. And it's just slow. It just stays there in the back of your mind, and then it just goes back. <laughs> The bitch fulfilled his threat. I'm scared. But, uh, yeah, if, uh, what are the two of you, like, if, say, in this campaign, you won, like, objective wise, where you want your character to be, which we discussed last time, what item. I'd be it vanilla or something that can be crafted out of nothing would help you achieve that or have it realized and sort of there. Stone of Mines. <laughs> <laughs> A whole... S ah, yes. The Stone of Mines. Sponsored by Verizon. Yes. Let me find it. <laughs> the Look, Verizon we can, Stone. We can go the Hobbit way. I'll be digging in a mine. There's a shiny stone. It's a Stone of Mines. Beautiful. Please... Don't let it be sponsored by T-Mobile. No. E-E, maybe. Just E. Eh. Oh, I, man, I don't uh, know. Satellite phone. All of my characters' goals, right? No. They're half oriented towards creating, and then uh, the other half is using and selling. Uh -huh. So Some... something that would help with either finding new ways of creating uh -huh. or well, you gotta remember eventually creating we're itself. gonna be mercenaries so. yeah, yeah but that doesn't stop him but even even of mercenaries mercenaries still need weapons right yeah, yeah. and any custom so, jobs will still make you money so someone could be exactly. like i want a, a sword i've got a bit of money can you build it i hear you're good etc so what a, a good thing i could do is Take the format that I had for Darone's stuff and mm -hmm. turn that into smithing if you wanted. Yeah. So it's pure utility it's for skills, pretty much. And I will pretty much just make a uh, one of these, pretty much. And then yeah, if, build if, it if up. I were to be able to point at something or have something created, right? Mm -hmm. Of a. Uh, magical item nature then i would say something to help me with smithing yeah i could definitely do then that i think that would benefit me and my character goals <laughs> best mm -hmm. you definitely do it i can work on something i can whip something up for henry i'm really trying i'm trying to think I don't know, because, like, it's interesting, because my character goals... An efficiency are... three pickaxe. <laughs> Look, I mean... Where'd he go? <laughs> give me a fucking... Give me a hand drill, dude. 
<laughs> Jackhammer. Just... Digga, 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 digga. <laughs> uh, no, but because Henry's goal is to essentially make sure everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, he sets up ambushes for the cat, he knew the cat wouldn't die in that situation. Oh, yeah, Henry drunk people. Back plan to get them off of him anyway. Yeah. I still would have laughed at him while he was getting shit. <laughs> he would, he would, he would yeah, he, he would have survived. He would have been fine. Uh, but as, like, me, I don't know. I favor, you know what I want for Henry? I favor the magic items that aren't necessarily, like, a magic weapon or magic armor. Mm -hmm. I want, like, magic items that I can use... Kind of freely and in like different situations for more RP things, or maybe to help my character in like different journeys. Like maybe like I don't know a miner's hat that like helps me find ores that I'm looking for, or gems or something, mm -hmm. or like the stone of mines, which is essentially just like a really good RP tool. But if you're smart. You can use it to like get armies together to do shit <laughs> once per week. Yeah, it's like, hey, bruh, no variants, dude. They're like on my front porch, just beyond the white picket fence. You gotta fucking sort them out. Just fucking yeah. checks out. Get the mailman. <laughs> I guess I just want like weird <clears throat> magic items because I'll find weird and interesting ways at least in my mind to use them mm -hmm. and that's a lot of fun for me. utility <clears throat> items tend to be far more interesting for our party yeah i think you guys seem to enjoy the utility ones that i conjure up often yeah they're, well, just because they're useful it, yeah they are i mean we can find a use for everything practically yeah. but i think it's because our party tends to think like immediately outside the box yeah. yeah like we see the box and then we're like all right so we're a mile away from the box let's plan mm -hmm. yeah we see a magic item coming then you know we have plans for it <laughs> what what i'm probably going to do is instead of just handing you magic items you're gonna have to go find them so Dude, that would many be quests. Dope. That yeah. would make a lot of sense for the world, seeing as. Currently, what the world's in? Yeah, it would make no, sense. Not just for the world, also for our characters, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, well, it's often like a... too easy for characters to acquire magic items. Yeah. In your current financial situation and the way your characters are pretty much inclined, finding them for yourself that is both free. Unless someone taxes for them. <laughs> uh, Dude, fuck. <laughs> fuck Esmer. No, nah, I mean, Esmer's she was best. great. She was class. I love Esmer. Fuck it. Pulling the strings behind the, the scenes, though. Listen, Schemer. she was a great character, and then she became a pay paladin. Yeah, she became paid off from there. <laughs> Look, once, I won't We're not dissing Holly like that. We can't do that to her. <laughs> once she started taxing us a bunch, you know, me and Melia, David and Melia were talking shit behind her back a little bit, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. There's nothing like that in the area you're in, but once you go to, like, Lucius's home country. You get taxed for magic items if you're buying them because it's an exotic tax. Uh, Marlo, you don't have to worry about it because they're invaded. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Growlin, you're never going to find magic items. Look, man, I'll settle for finding a shield. <laughs> I do have a shield in mind for you, but uh, it will take some time to See, test that's it scares me that scares me that you have a shield in mind because that means that there's no shield in the whole world. <laughs> 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 
It's like I'm never gonna fucking find one. Don't, until it's you don't find it. Like, ah! You never know. And if you do, it's gonna look like a nipple. It's gonna have like a big bubble on the end. Ah, yes, nipple shield. It's not even a shield, it's like a oh, hand yeah. glove, it's just a shield on the end. <laughs> yeah. I, th I thought you would like that design. Uh, you definitely you definitely get to see a lot more uh, magic games. Just crop out of you guys memeing most of the time. I do make dumb meme items as well. Uh, I don't know. You know what? Just as soon as I fin almost tried to finish that sentence, I had one already in my head from a meme that you guys already made. So <laughs> keep the meme items common, honestly. Those oh yeah. Are cool items. Yeah, because definitely. those items are usually used to make another meme, like Yoshi stuffing cookies down Sir Lauren's fucking mask. Oh, poor Sir Lauren. It's like, hey, he has a, a helm that's shaped like a spout. I'm gonna put cookies in it. That's another fun... That cookie jar had a multitude of uses to annoy people and keep themselves alive. Yep. No rations, have cookie. Now think if he was lucky enough and he rolled the edibles on it. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been, that would have been great. That's that's a weapon that I will like. When you said Sir Lorcan, I was like, that's one weapon I've never given you guys. I've never given you that sword, ever. Oh, please, give me that sword and let no. me pull a barbarian real quick. No. <laughs> Imagine a rogue with that at level twenty. <laughs> Dude, assassin rogue, you auto crit. From stealth, so you just guarantee that you get the damage die up. I'd be looking for people to get into fights with. <laughs> get damage die I just up. want you to test this for me. <laughs> that sort of terrifying. It, and there's two of them. It's not even like it's the only one. No, Excalibur is a thing. Was that the other? Yeah. Was that the last version of it? Um, so Lorcan had, oh, I can't remember the name of the sword. It's a Gallic word. Uh, uh, uh Tiernaroch or something like that? Tiernaroch? Tiernari. That was his name of the sword. That's it. The Sword of Justice. Uh, but yeah, then there was Excalibur, which is a sword that's around. Uh, that was owned by um, the last queen of the Summer Court, if I remember. Oh, the Lionheart. What's her name? She was buried with it. I can't remember. Richard the Lionheart? Uh, she was called the Lionheart. It was it was when you went. I think it was when you were fighting the Dreadlord. Uh, you went in the castle and did the trials of the uh, the virtuous knights. Oh, uh, the sister of uh... who is her brother? Was it Sir Lorcan? No. No, no, no. Um, the brother was uh, Ciro Alien. Who was the Dreadlord? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, wait. Wasn't that his wife? Aglaka! Oh, no. That was her name. Aglaka the Lionheart. That's who. Yeah, she has Excalibur. Well, had Excalibur. <laughs> She's dead now. Aglaka. Oh, she still has it. She's buried with it in the Fake Court. <laughs> It's a thing. You can pick it up if you really want to get on the bat. Maybe next campaign. In the evil campaign. Evil the campaign the campaign. heist for Excalibur. Piss off all the entire fake court. 
That shit's gonna start happening in the world. I've already planted seeds for it. I'm just waiting for it to start happening. Which will be probably campaign five. Campaign five when the fake court attacks. Dude, I'll be on the fake court side. I always side with the fake. Based such cool lore. Uh, campaign four might be really short and I don't know why. I think it'll only be like levels ten to twenty. Quite oh, short. Start with level 10? Probably. I don't know. Because it's a villain campaign, and I don't really know how to write evil campaigns. I'll think of something. I but I have plenty of time. I've the got... PPG is actually the good guys, right? Well, yeah. Pretty much. Because we're the villains. Yeah. That's part of the villain campaign. It... We're the bad guys. Yeah, for anyone that does watch this podcast, if you're curious to know what I mean by evil campaign, if you watch Austin Powers, it's Dr. Evil. That kind of villain can't be as shit. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> I've fallen into my dungeon adventure, fool. <laughs> you know what? I just had a great idea for you, bro. What? For, for campaign four. No? Uh -huh. We... Like, obviously, all of us are behind the idea of having, like, a silly evil villain. Mm -hmm. So, just, like, cut us loose for, like, ten sessions. And I guarantee you, we'll, we'll figure some shit out to do to start our evil villain. <laughs> and then, then, you bring in the BBEG in quotes of the mark. And it's just an equally shitty hero team. On the other side, <laughs> we just keep clashing periodically. They never so beat each other. It's like, group. yeah, you are Doctor Doofenshmirtz, and the good guys are Perry the Platypus. <laughs> I, I do think that's a great idea because you don't need to defeat uh, your opponent, right? No, just just win the battle is sometimes more than enough. Yeah. Oh no, we're literally going to be campaigning Mega Mind, aren't we? Aren't we? I don't know. It's gonna happen. I have multiple characters made for it. It's, go it's gonna action. be the plot of Mega Mind. <laughs> the villain defeats the hero and needs to make another one so they <laughs> they can fight them. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> Man, we did track it like hard from magic items yeah. for a bit there. <laughs> but uh that was quite a funny uh, segue, I guess. All right, on three, guys. <laughs> on three, everyone mention the type of magic they hate the most. In, in terms of like one, what? Two, three, Hold up, fate magic. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I thought you meant like I was like schools of magic or natural magic or divine no. magic. Or... Type of magic. Type of magic. Time magic. Croner, G or whatever the hell it is. Arcane magic, then. Pretty much. I mean, all magic is arcane, right? Somewhat. Except for divine magic. Divine and there's natural arcane. magic. There's arcane, divine, nature, and fate. Uh, I divided them up I in a different things. I don't dislike any of them. Yeah, they're great. They all have their niches, but sometimes a type of magic just doesn't work with your campaign setup. Yeah. And you need to realize that and just axe that whole shit. Yeah. I will always and forever hate fate magic because wish shouldn't be a spell. Yeah, but wish isn't all of the fate magic. It isn't, but what hmm. good fate magic can you mention? Because uh... deck of cards are all fate magic. Wish is fate magic. Good fate magic uh... is dependent on the application of fate magic well, that's a good fate magic if you properly um both wish spell and the deck of many things can actually help propel a campaign mm -hmm. um... but most <clears throat> of the time they're abused that's it. why you don't like them the abusability <laughs> of fate magic is <laughs> Far higher than that of others. Yeah, it's definitely it has up there. far fewer checks and balances. Yeah, because it's so untethered. But it's addressed. 
than fate magic has place in the world. There are consequences to using fate magic. There is an NPC in campaign three that has had that consequence of too much fate magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've encountered them, but they just never were designed for any interest. Uh, um, I actually really like coming across when magic goes wrong in the campaign. Mm -hmm. Like in campaign... Um... In campaign 1, you had the unkillable man. Because yep. healing magic turned him invincible. Generation into him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, one... one... <laughs> I can't remember her name right now. Who? Golden Hound. She was a downside of magic. Oh, the, the broken, the broken beast. Came. Yeah. Yeah. She. She was another downside of magic. Mm -hmm. Took in too much. Yeah. Um. There's quite a few of them that have been busted up by bad magic. Uh, Krieg was one of them. That was uh, that was some dark magic right there. Creek deserved it. <laughs> I mean, he literally feeble minded the guy and beat the shit out of him. He basically busted up someone with a mental handicap that you induced. <laughs> yeah, Creek was kind of bad. <laughs> he was a horrible person. Uh, in terms of like fate magic, as much as you hate it, Kenny, you literally designed a fate magic with me for Zook, <laughs> which was uh, the Divine Undoing, <laughs> which is however, busted. However, both me and Zook, I made Zook also somebody that hates fate magic, even though he made that spell. However, he would never actually cast that spell unless it was me. In which case, like, he doesn't even... He made the spell as, like, a super backup plan <laughs> in the case that the gods would ever, like, go fucking nuts. But he never, he doesn't, like, foresee ever having to use it. No. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. No. That will happen at some point. But it will just be in a, a little tick on my timeline. And that will be it. Which I do need to update as well. The timeline is a very important thing that is super needed right now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I'm not quite sure how else to continue with Magic Items. There's not much I can say about it. Creating it, it's a hassle, but it can be done. Vanilla stuff's great. Sometimes some, I... some vanilla stuff just needs to be, like, mixed. Like, headband of intellect. You need to attune to that shit. Hard. <laughs> oh, dude, you imagine if Henry got his hands on a headband of intellect? <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. I am I, omniscient. I broke, I broke a campaign with that one. It, it was a random roll by the GM and a drop. And a character with 8 intellects only had 19 intellect. <laughs> And it was, uh, I believe it was my only uh, arcane archer <laughs> who wasn't really high on uh, intellect. But as when I was creating it, I didn't know you needed intellect for most of the arcane uh, arrows. Uh -huh. So I went ha a ham on um, dexterity, right? That's the primary stat. Hmm. You shoot things. Yeah. And then that thing dropped. And I just, there we go. I, That's 11 extra intellect points. Man, I just... Take it? I just don't like Arcane Archer. <laughs> True. Dude, They're just like... horrible. It's so bad. It's, it could be a lot better, but it mm -hmm. it requires three primary stats. Wisdom, intellect, and dexterity. Yeah. But probably in that order as well. For fighter, it's not great. You need dex or strength, con... And your other thing, like uh, Eldritch Knights need intelligence on top of that. Okay. Uh, battle Masters need charisma or wisdom. 
Okay. Champion. Fine. Arcane Archer. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually fine with Arcane Archer requiring three main stats if they went back to, like, original Arcane Archer. Because Arcane Archer was so strong that it got nerfed into the fucking ground. Like, if you play Arcane Archer, you mm -hmm. are actually playing a weaker class than if you just went normal 5e ranger yeah like it's aw it's fucking awful yeah i i arcane archer. i basically revised the arcane archer for savala so i was like okay he, he he has a he can prepare arrows up to his intelligence modifier or his wisdom either or whatever is higher and just has them usable it's like okay i've prepped like, okay, I've got plus four, so I've prepped four types of arrows that I can use, one of each. And that's it. For a day. Instead of just being like, I have all these, I'm going to use two, and that's it. I'm empty. <laughs> they do have some cool things, though. Like, you can shoot an arrow and you can redirect it if you miss. Uh, they do a cool thing. But, but they're just so... They're being pulled in three different directions, yeah. and it's... It's costing you a lot, yeah, to try and and work it. It's right? definitely it a multi-class subclass, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe. That's what I would think. Um, I mean, that's what it used to be, right? Didn't you used to have? What was it? You had to have sorcerer or wizard mm -hmm. to a certain point, and then you had to take bard for a couple levels and then you could get arcane archer i don't know um yeah, it's... yeah it might have been that way in a game or something could have been i don't know it's a long time but i thought there were like actual multi-class requisites for arcane archer back in the day but yeah um random magic item red tables they're great just make sure every now and then that you just remove some items from that table before you start rolling. Yeah, you uh, can break your game with that. I, I did that a lot in campaign too, a lot. It's like, yeah. oh, they just rolled a sphere of annihilation. I'm gonna change that. Talisman of pure <laughs> evil? No. <laughs> Have a. It makes Dude, sense, right? Gave that to us. What? Fuck. We could have had so much fun with that. I'm gonna stick it in the cookie jar and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have saved that to try to shove up Krieg's ass. <laughs> see what happens. Excuse me, sir. Bend over. <laughs> Rosebud, even. <laughs> Doesn't account as an attack in the Feywild. I'm just giving him a prostate exam. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nearly time for us to call it, but not been the most eventful bilateral episode. I but do have one thing for mm -hmm. probably the last session mm -hmm. of this campaign um, a modified Arcanum. Uh -huh. And really horribly modified, right? Because mm -hmm. in that case, I can just turn the handcart into a mobile smithy. Just build a door on the handcart. Enter the door, and you're in a smithy. You're not gonna serve That handcart will die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guys, you still don't have any money. Yeah, we funneled it into this fucking war chariot that carries our shit. <laughs> it's got like turrets. Why, why and it's, door on your handcart? <laughs> it's got its own minions. It's got its own guards, people. It's covered in armor. And it's survives everyone else dies but that cart remains <laughs> by the end of this campaign i'm telling you i wasn't even joking i am going to make sure that cart lives to the fucking last session <laughs> even if i have to pull its burning ashes from the to... gods itself <laughs> If I have to disassemble that motherfucker to put it in a new cart, 
to take the damage to reassemble it <laughs> later, that fucking cart will make it to the end. You're not, uh, you're doing, you're like creating a paradox doing that. I'm gonna replace every plank in this and take all the old planks and build the cart. Now, which one is the original cart? You can't tell me the original will survive. You'll never know which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we will put some seeds into these planks, right? And then we'll just grow a new cart from the original <laughs> cart. So if the original cart doesn't survive, its offspring will. Oh, a little magic cart that duplicates itself. <laughs> Just starts it growing. Like it just starts dividing itself like <laughs> the fucking cell division. As a parting gift, right, for uh, magic items for this campaign, <laughs> uh, a modified version of the campaign one uh, Arcanum is just that I can design as a smithy in a practice field. I might do that. Shop. I might do that. I think I think that's that's a nice way to uh, send off the campaign. Yeah, it I, might happen. I just don't want to have it halfway through because that's way too powerful. Yeah. I mean, is your character able to make something like that? That's like heavy high end crafting. That's, that's more magic than it is anything else. Yeah, that's that's why it's supposed to be an item at the end of the game. This is not yeah. something I will be able to craft. No. It's a wizard that can craft it. That's it. Exactly. And you, you need real magic users to make that. But even... if we do come across one at the end of the campaign, I'd be really happy. That's what I was asking, though. It's because I couldn't remember. I mean, campaign one was a long fucking time ago. A campaign one was a long time ago, but I don't think you <laughs> created the arcade. No, I... No, I got it because you got it for starting at the school that I started. Yeah. That I for starting at Ruby uh, Hollow. So yeah. You got it as a spell. Yeah. Well, I got enough. it. It was an item. It mm. wasn't a spell. Okay. But the question that I had about it, and Mu, Mo, you might remember, because mm -hmm. I definitely don't. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if one of the prerequisites to using an arcane or an arcanum was that you had to use magic. Was it, were you able to use that without magic? Because I can't uh, I recall. Some people can. Uh, you just have to have an intelligence of 13 to use it. Uh, Coronar, what's your end at? 10, I think. 10, yeah. Not far ago. And he's a fire, so it's just like... Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> I get 8, you get 4. Exactly. Yeah. Start fucking pumping uh, up. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely I'll think about designing a, a Smith Arcanum. Uh, you know what? If anybody in the world would create an art like a mobile Smith Arcanum, you know Azure probably had a hand in that. Uh, he did have a portable Smithy, but it was a basically a hand. It was a horse drawn cart. And that was it. Yeah, but this one would be a an a, actual smith a draw hand cart. <laughs> yeah, with Which, the door on it. It's like, hey, we're gonna buy the wall with the map on it and just put it in this hand cart. <laughs> that just opens the door, just shoves a wall in it. Dude, it's the TARDIS. TARDIS <laughs> <Artist> hand cart. <laughs> oh man, no. You have to paint it blue. <laughs> That's right. my only exception. <laughs> it's my condition. I, right. I don't live with that. Do I get to choose the color blue? Or does it have to, have to be um, a police box blue? P police box blue. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Send for Nars the boss and you want it blue. My demand is that you have to give Coronar a fez. I depend. Bow tie. Mm, bow tie I, I don't think Fez is really a thing in Kagara. I would not. You don't have any part of the world in Eurothan that's like modeled after Arabian Nights or something? Yeah, there's quite a few places, but they don't wear Fez. They wear like turbans. So well, some of them can wear Fezzes. They just don't exist. That's Tybal. He'll 
make you one. I don't I, know what they are. If they don't exist, how am I supposed to know like, that? Can I get a hat that looks like a strange cup with a tassel on the end that just sits perfectly around the rim of my head? You know, if anybody was going to ask for a hat made in that way, it would probably be Henry. Or Bucket. I have one. I have a hat that just fits perfectly. Resize this bucket for me, and then they make a fez. Resize this bu uh, bucket and add a tassel to it. So, unless uh, we've got any other things we can add to this, we'll have to call it there. Uh, I don't think I have anything else for magic items, really. Mm -hmm. I could go like into a lot of magic like just base magic stuff but i also but that... <laughs> yeah. we could yes, talk I... about actual like the the lore of magic another time but i know what we're doing next time which uh i believe jeeves suggested to me uh was uh rule sets oh yeah the rule sets that we use and why we use them yeah we'll talk about yeah. rule sets next time and uh Hopefully get that uh get a, a bit more uh people in to <laughs> give their opinions on what rule sets. I really hope Rook will be here. Yeah, he knows best. more about it than any of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there with the PDF open like I just don't know where to start. We might have to see if a different time will work better for Rook next week then. Because I I think with his new job the one that's making him miss Sundays now mm -hmm. is it's he said he had to work so that's why he's not here for this mm -hmm. I think just the, his job time now is lined up wrong for him. yeah it might be I think he what said yeah I think uh, he should be pretty much back to normal at some point but who knows uh, it's kind of hard to in 2020 <laughs> No, I'm sitting here in a Hawaiian shirt in fucking October. <laughs> so yeah, that it just started snowing today for me. Uh, it, was, it was pouring rain, and I had to cycle to work, so that was great. Uh, but yeah, uh, so call it there, and let everyone pretty much get back to reality, I guess. And uh, thank you all so much for joining in, and. As always, stay safe out there, adventurers. Eat cookies. Eat plenty of cookies. Plenty of cookies. <laughs> <laughs>